Hi, George. How are you? Morning. The sun is shining. Life is good here in the Netherlands. Oh, you're in the Netherlands at home? Yeah. I'm not allowed to come into Germany anymore, so from now on it's working from home. Uh, yeah, Corona times are crazy times, aren't they? They are. And, and you know, um, we found out that the kitchen where I'm currently am is quite a, a place which can be used for different things than eating only. <laughs> So uh, welcome uh, to our podcast uh, today uh, with George Gudrian um, or Kaudrian, as I should say, uh, head of HR ABN AMRO uh, Germany. And uh, you have a nice uh, plates here on the wall. Uh, what is this behind you? You know, it's always nice to see on private rooms uh, <laughs> what you can see. What do you have here on your on your left side? Uh, most welcome into my house indeed. Uh, what you see is that uh, the Netherlands is the country of Van Gogh and since we are in the kitchen here um, this is a picture of a, a work of art I should say uh, which is a combination of cutlery and china and Van Gogh work embroidered on the plates um, and we thought it was rather fitting to the room. Okay. Um, and since a real Van Gogh is out of scope for the moment it's just the work of art. For the moment. <laughs> Yeah, what should always aspire, right? <laughs> so, uh, George, um, thank you for uh, being uh, with me here today. Um, so, um, as we have uh, very crazy times with Corona, um, of course, I have uh, several questions also around Corona, but also how um, uh, you are dealing as uh, what are your um, um, important topics you are dealing as an HR uh, responsible. Um, here for, for, for this big bank group. But let's maybe first start in, in talking about um, Corona itself. How does it impact your organization? How do you deal with it? Um, you know, we have home office topics, certainly also in your company. Uh, so what is your experience now after at least a month or even more uh, with this uh, uh, very particular situation? I think uh, this is the true black swan which everybody always refers to. Uh, of course, we always prepared within the bank for uh, uh, for, for crisis times. Uh, we have a rather extensive business continuity management function. Um, but you always prepare for the thing which you don't know what it is. And as it happened, we had a few months ago a little incident in uh, the building. Someone uh, accidentally, accidentally, excuse me, kicked off one of the sprinklers at the ceiling and you have really no idea how much water comes out of those sprinklers and really within a second. So we learned there to use and optimize the business continuity function. Uh, little did we know that only a few months later we need to scale that up a little bit. Um, so what we did is the moment we started, develop, we started seeing this developing on television, uh, we set up a small crisis team, uh, interestingly enough, communications, HR, and uh, technology and operations. And we started brainstorming on what the impact could be. We had no idea where we are right now, to be very honest, because we simply couldn't imagine that. But we, we made a few plans. Um, and then we set up a second premium, which was called the, the uh, business crisis team. And basically all the senior managers of the bank are a member of it. And we use that twice a week uh, to update them, but also to take big, impact, impactful decisions. Um, but as we learned uh, along the way, uh, in Germany, the Works Council is a really important body to cooperate with. Uh, we also wanted to have a special discussion premium only with the Works Council. So we set up a Pandemie aus Schuss. Um, and this is a meeting um, where the, 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 the management of the bank and the Betriebsrat meets on a regular basis and is able to decide on impactful decisions for the staff. And usually, as you know, when you have impactful decisions for staff, you need to negotiate it with the, the works council and sometimes even with the, uh, the local works councils. But during a time of crisis or a pandemic, as we have it here, uh, we can decide in this pandemic issue. So we set up immediately three bodies by which we could act and react on whatever is happening. And okay. I think the, um, the, the most impactful thing we did at the beginning was changing the whole bank into a wechselbetrieb. So we started with a team ABN and a team EMRO, uh, which meant the one week 
50% of the bank could come into the buildings and the other week, the other 50% of the bank. Oh, so you call it IBN team and AMRO team. <laughs> no one wants to be part of team B. So this is how we avoided that. <laughs> And uh, when we saw that the, the, the let's say, the, 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 the crisis or the, the illness spread even further, uh, we went to, into skeleton battery, which means that we now have in the whole of Germany, uh, in all our branches, only some, somewhere between 40 and 50 people working and all the other people working from home. And to be honest, I was amazed. Uh, we migrated to uh, Microsoft Teams at the end of last year, early this year. And yeah, of course we had the, the, the video function, um, but we had no idea that, that only three months later, everybody would be talking more or less permanently into the video function of Teams. Um, and I think what the, the, the IT department did a crazy good job there. So from one day or the other, we had approximately 20,000 people worldwide using Teams on a daily basis. Um, within ABN, we have um, the Netherlands I'm referring now to, we have a, a quite long history of working from home or mobile working already. Uh, but in the other countries, we are slowly but surely uh, introducing it. Um, in Germany, we had a betriebsvereinbaring on mobile working last year, but that was only for a day a week. Eh? And now we're talking about five days a week working from home. Um, so that's a major impact in, um, for the operations of the bank, but also for the, the staff itself. Um, but I think those are the two things we have to take care of most in this in this time, that we keep the bank aufrecht um, and that we uh, take care that the health of the employees is being secured and assured. Okay, so um, what is your experience? Do you see already a change of uh, in, in in the company culture in the way people are working together now with these more mobile virtual um, yeah collaboration? Uh, so, what is your first experience now after a few weeks of uh, of virtual working? I think it's very tiring looking all day long in a screen. To be very honest. Um, and, and the second aspect is that um, as HR, part of your role is to, to talk to a variety of people all day long. And now you only talk to the people who you actually look, look up through the, uh, through the system. So the, let's say the, the bycatch is much smaller. Um, so you need to work harder to stay up to date what's going on in the business and with the staff. Um, but what I like in this um, uh, uh, situation is that I can't see what my HR team is doing all day long so I have to trust them um, and I think from a Dutch perspective that's already quite normal but in Germany we are, we are getting there more and more I can't look at them uh, eight hours a day so I can only judge on output and I love to judge on output because if you can do it in an hour as opposed to three hours well very well done um, hours are to me irrelevant and of course personal opinions don't matter in this but I like that this let's say crisis establishes a little shift towards that yeah, yeah. you know what is funny um, uh, I have the same experience and um, what is interesting most of the meetings are focused meetings so you have an, uh, you have a schedule and you're jumping immediately in the first minute after the technology is fixed here yeah, uh, into uh, into the topic. And uh, but what, what what is missing a little bit? That's what I found out even in my team is uh, those informal chats. You know, you have in the office, you just go to a colleague, hey, how was the holiday? Uh, how was that? Da, da, da. So all those informal chats are not really there anymore in those video conferencing meetings. Um, and w w what we have done, for example, every Tuesday from three to five, we have uh, two hours teams. We have also teams in our company, uh, coffee corner. So we have a virtual coffee uh, corner um, chat room. And who wants to come between three and five is in a meeting and can out when he wants to go out. And, you know, you have a come and go from people in this meeting. I'm there all the two hours. Nice. And uh, then you, uh, you know, that's not a room for, uh, you can also talk about business as you do in the coffee corner. Sometimes you take mm -hmm. a coffee, but you yeah. can also talk about other things. 
So this uh, more informal topic, which is in the office, I made a good experience now in my company to have this also online, and it works great. So, but it's a it's a new way of thinking, you know, not just yeah. business meetings, but also this room for who wants to come is there, and it's fine if it's here. If it doesn't come, it's also fine. There is no need, but it's a room for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I strongly believe that you hear the uh, the floor funk um, primarily on those kind of meetings and you hear the the things which are perhaps not essential enough to send an email about but are relevant for day-to-day -day business correct and uh, we have done uh, one should always stay close to one's own heart so i've introduced digital drinks um which we do uh, at the end of the day once a week only by the way um and then people sit on their balcony or in their garden with a glass of beer or wine or whatever and we just chat a little bit um and every now and then uh, let's say a corporate topic pops up but it's primarily how do you experience your day of work? Same, the same logic, yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, um, how do you um, how do you deal with the topic that you know people are could, could let's say could be distracted by being home all the time uh, by having children around you having you know so not being f f there is this assumption. Uh, you are your energy is degrading from day to day, and uh, maybe the first day you start at eight, second day at eight thirty, third day at nine, then you sleep until eleven. And so that uh, you know this um, missing social um, social is it pressure. No, this social supervision you have in an organization as being at a certain time in the office and living at a certain office and then working. Uh, in, in this time, if this, do, do you see um, a degrading in talking with your people? Um, and if yes, what is the way you are avoiding it that people are, you know, be, being sucked too much in private life and maybe missing uh, missing the business at, at a certain yeah. time? Well, I think. Um as various research shows uh, is that people uh, who work from home uh, tend to work much more than when they're in the office. I'm not saying more effective, that I can't judge, but work more because they find it different to have the balance between work and private. So what we said, when this crisis, uh, let's say, came kicking in, um, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. So this is long term is the focus we should have here. So straight on from the beginning, we have uh, been very uh, gross tukig when people said we have children around I can't work eight hours in one go I need to have a break in between or I need to work more in the morning or in the evening we said all is fine and of course you'll understand all between brackets but as long as you make sure that you manage and survive your home situation and um, for the longer run and the second thing we do is uh, we not only um, uh, state that people should be, let's say, a little bit relaxed when they not make their full working hours on one day uh, because they can catch up some other day or they can whatever. This is a marathon, as I said. We always, we also very clearly focus on um, vitality. So in the Q and A's which we have online, in the all staff calls which our country executive hosts, um, we stress every time again and again. Um, Go stand up from your desk, make a little walk in the, in the lunch, during the lunch break. Um, take care of yourself. I myself, I have a rowing machine here at home. During the lunch times, I start rowing. Um, or just go out for go do grocery shopping. You know, the hours are being made anyhow. Yeah. It's just to, 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 to live this through. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult, I find it a difficult balance as an employer. How much can you suggest? or tell to your employees, uh, because whether they remain vital, of course, we can't force them, but we, what we can do is provide tools so that people can um, uh, pick them up if they want, and if they feel the need to it, and stay healthy. And the last thing we focus on is, um, if you have a bit of a, let's say, a down moment, uh, so there's perhaps a little bit less time to, a little bit less work to do, um, check our intranet for, uh, trainings or courses we have literally hundreds of different of courses and trainings online um, some on soft skills some on hard skills 
So whatever you feel is needed, use it now. Use the time for it um, um, uh, and, and develop yourself. I think that's an important point to use. Uh, you know, um, many HR, uh, head of HR are, are now pushing this. It's a good opportunity to, to close um, skill, uh, uh, yeah, uh, skill gaps you, uh, you might have. Uh, but uh, what, is, uh, uh, what is a precondition is that there are online courses also available. I think uh, we offer as a bank quite a lot online to our own tools and systems. Um, but I don't know how it is in your inbox, but at the moment I'm getting swamped with free uh, online seminars on really every Everything. imaginable topic. So I think focus is very important. Um, so what I stress with my team is um, focus on what you want to achieve in the coming year or years and choose the matching courses or trainings with it. And to be honest, um, I followed the course a few years ago in London on uh, the 100 year working life from Linda Gretton. And she stated time and time again, we need to work longer than our parents or great parents, great grandparents did. The only way you can do that is by remaining attractive for the employer. So having knowledge, skills, experience, and remaining fit uh, by, by, you know, uh, exercising, uh, stay healthy. And I try to bring that message across to the team and to the bank. You know what, uh, my experience I have uh, also with my team is that um, there is one, uh, one thread. It's that you're losing the rhythm. You know, there is a kind of, um, when going to work, there's a daily rhythm you have in. You might lose if everyone is somewhere. So a good experience I made is uh, coming more from the agile environment. To, to introduce with, with, with the teams uh, you have uh, a dailies and weeklies. Yeah? To have a kind of check-in every morning, a, 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 a 10 minutes yeah, where everyone is there and just saying what they're doing today, maybe a closing of the day, and then a weekly, you know, a wrap-up of the week and, uh, and the forecast for the next week. So having these teams sent, otherwise you're always in different meetings you, uh, and you don't really exchange about what you're in reality um, yeah, uh, working at as a team. Yeah. And having a kind of, of uh, rhythm, yeah. bang, ba -ding, da -ding, daily, weekly, uh, gives, a, gives a kind of structure uh, to the work of the team. So I, I, I highly recommend uh, dailies and weeklies as a kind of structure of working together in a virtual environment. Thanks, and I think, uh, as you said, with the, 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 the technological, technolog technological support we have, it is possible. Yeah. I mean, three yeah. years ago, I, I cannot imagine how this would have worked, uh, because I can remember the first times we used WebEx and Skype and what it all is, and there were so often failures and now just with the, the, the touch of a button it works yeah what is your um, so maybe it's too early to say something about that but uh, uh, when I would ask you what, what are your first assumptions uh, what will be different in the working environment after so in the post corona time uh, what do you think what would be different what will change what's your assumption on that one I think mobile working is here to stay. Um, I think that um, th we've now all seen that working from home is possible um, and that people actually, at least for shorter period of times, like it uh, because they can focus more when they're at home, um, they save travel time. So I think uh, mobile working is here to stay, not to the extent as that we have it right now, um, but um, there is this English joke, uh, any meeting without food should be an email. So, <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps it's right. So, so we just need to adjust to a new reality. Um, and maybe, maybe we're there. We're getting there. Yeah. It's, you I know, think it's, the second thing that will, sorry. No, no, go on. I think the second thing that will change dramatically is business traveling. Um, I think we now see, um, that it can be done without travels. And I understand in the future, every now and then one needs to travel. I fully understand. Uh, but as we see it now, it saves time, money, and the environment. Um, 
I think that there will be a, a, a will and perhaps also hope there will be a, a big decrease in business traveling. And I think the last major change I see and also hope for is that uh, digitization will sort of pick up. Um, we have had so many processes where we always said, um, no, this has to be done physically. We, 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 we have to uh, sign it. And now we find out when we really want, it can be done differently, uh, internally and externally. And you know, if you don't do it for the, the, the efficiency, then do it for the sustainability. And I think a last thing, but that's not so much HR driven, is that companies will start looking for, a, let's say, a broader spectrum of suppliers. So now there is a big focus on quite often the cheapest supplier, but that's often very far away. And now you see in times of crisis that you have a supplier far away, but you can't get it here to your own plant or, or a factory. So I think there will be a more diverse, let's say, portfolio of Lieferanten. Yeah, true. You know, I made the same experience. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a consultant, you're traveling a lot. And now since four weeks, I'm almost traveling uh, nowhere. I'm just staying at home and making all my meetings here uh, with, uh, with the camera in front of me and uh, an online systems. Uh, and uh, funny that you just said that uh, with traveling, uh, one of my customers is a, a CEO of a big uh, rent car company. And his assumption is that uh, he will have one third less uh, uh, less revenue after the crisis because a lot of business people will not travel. You know, they are just uh, understanding that some some meetings can be just done online, and there is no need anymore for uh, physical meetings. And so there is a whole industry behind that which will suffer from <laughs> not traveling anymore. Uh, airlines, uh. The last time I flew from the Netherlands to Frankfurt, um, I walked over the airport. This is now, I think, a month ago. And it was, it was like being in a bad movie. It was completely deserted and yeah. only a few planes left. And I don't think that will be the future, but less traveling. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So more quality time and not spending time in airplanes and cars and trains. And that's the feedback I get from my team also a lot. Eh? It saves so much time um, and or you can use that by working more yes. um, or just being with your family or, or having a drink or go out for a walk or whatever. Yes. Um, I think the, the rhythm of life gets friendlier. I think that's a nice uh, last sentence from you, George. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I know you have your next call in a few minutes, so uh, thank you for that. And maybe we can uh, repeat that in the next days or weeks. I would love to. Thank you, George, for, for inviting me. And um, thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day.